Hi everybody, my name is Mark. Today I'm going to show you how to replace an internal battery in this Roland VGA5 amplifier. Now these were made several years ago by Roland. They're not made anymore. They made a VGA3, a VGA5, and a VGA7 model. This again is the VGA5, the middle model. But I believe all of them had an internal battery, so this video may help you changing the battery in any of those three models if you have one of these. Now the VGA5 has some presets, and uh, it's a really nice amp. I've had it for many years. I bought it uh, when they quit making them, when they had a closeout for Music 123 online. They've enjoyed it, but I started having issues with the amp. And what would happen was is that it would play fine for a while, and then the volume would drop drastically at some point, and then the sound got very, very muddy. And uh, the intervals where that happened got quicker and quicker and quicker. And so sometimes it would play fine for two weeks, then the volume would drop off. But near the end, before I changed the battery, it would get to the point where it last only maybe an hour or so, and then the volume would drop down, and that muddiness would come in. So I looked online trying to find solutions, uh, how to change the battery. I knew from the owner's manual that there was an internal battery in this. I wasn't quite sure if that would solve the problem or was causing the issue or not at the time. But uh, fortunately it did. It turns out it did. This is a pretty simple job. It's not that I'm not, you know, a technician or anything like that. Just a guy that's been playing guitar for years. And so uh, the skill set you need for it's not really that sophisticated. Fortunately, it wasn't that difficult to do. So again, I could not find anything online, no YouTube videos, no help from the uh, company when I emailed them as to how to change that internal battery. The owner's manual states that there is an internal battery in there and that you should change it every two years, but I have not done that. So again, that led me to believe that that may be part of the problem causing the amp to cut out and the, and the volume to drop off. So hopefully this amp, or this uh, video will show you how to repair this amp. It might save you some repair money and taking it into a shop, or if you decide you're frustrated with it and wanted to get rid of the amp, it might be a reason to keep it. Uh, if you can make this repair yourself, or maybe have someone you know make the repair for you. But uh, with that said, my daughter is helping me film today. So again, appreciate your viewing and uh, let's get started. Okay, so what I'm going to be using today to go ahead and replace this battery are the following. Uh, a screwdriver, Phillips head screwdriver. This is a cordless electric screwdriver. Uh, a pair of needle nose pliers. This long flat head screwdriver. Uh, I'm going to be using a towel as well. Uh, just a regular size hand towel. And then the most important part is the battery itself. It takes a, 2030, a CR2032 lithium uh, coin type battery. So you will need one of these as well to replace the old one. Okay, step one obviously is to unplug the amp, make sure it's turned off and then unplug the amp before you do anything else. That being done, then they're going to actually just remove the chassis from the cabinet. And to do that, there are a set of six Phillips head screws on the top here. And then there are two Phillips head screws on the side on each side of the amp. So a total of 10 screws, six plus two plus two is 10 total screws. And again, they need a Phillips head screwdriver to be removed. Okay, before we get started on screwing the chassis from the cabinet, you'll notice that the speaker wires, they go from the speakers itself up to the chassis are right there. So fortunately, we don't want to pull this chassis all the way out because that may pull those uh, wires loose from the speaker itself and then of course the amp won't work and then you have to open up this whole cabinet. So fortunately, it turns out, there is enough slack in those wires to where I can partially pull the chassis out as you'll see later. And then you don't have to do anything with this wiring, just be very careful of it. The other thing I'll point out is that the gap between the cabinet and the chassis, when you finally undo these screws, that will drop. So what I'm going to do is put a towel underneath there to keep that from dropping down and banging after I remove the screws and damaging the chassis in any way. So we're ready to start unloosening the uh, chassis from the cabinet and I'm going to start with the screws on each side first. So it's kind of important to do that because you don't want this chassis again dropping down and do the top screws first and do the side, it's much easier to do it the other way around where you loosen the top last and the sides first. So these screws are kind of long, so it takes a second. If you're doing this manually, it might take you a bit. So 
We'll leave those there, then we'll go around to the other side and do the same process there. For. Then we're going to do the front of the cabinet first, or the front of the chassis first. Before I do these back screws, what I'm going to do is insert this hand towel in the gap. Again, to help keep this amp from dropping down and banging once I finally loosen all the screws. Last one, I'm going to again wedge my fingers under here also to hold this chassis so it doesn't fall down and bang once I remove this last screw. So now you see that chassis drops down. And you can just grab it and pull it out carefully. Again, not all the way, but just to about this point where it's maybe three or four inches sticking out. And from here, you can see the housing for the battery. And it is right here. And again, you can see it's a coin type battery. Okay, so here's the battery in the holder. You can see it's got some prongs on the side and on the back, and there's a lip in front. And what I'm going to do is take this screwdriver, this flathead screwdriver, and gently wedge it behind here, and then push on that. And then once I get that loose over that lip, I'm gonna grab this battery with a pair of needle nose pliers and pull it out. See the battery. And then all you need to do to put the new battery back in is take this, put the the side with the writing on it, the, uh, the non-smooth side, you put that on top to where you can read the, the writing on it. And I'm going to take this, go ahead and again gently stick it in this housing. And then pop it back in. Make sure it's in there snugly. We should be good to go. Okay, so we've got the battery in place. Now it's time to reattach the chassis to the cabinet. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna start with the back first because it's kind of difficult to line these holes up uh, otherwise. So what I'm gonna do is uh, stick this through the cabinet hole to where I can see the bottom of the screw come out. And I'm going to gently, again, push this chassis back in place. At this point, we can take this towel out now.
line this back screw up. And then tighten it. Not all the way yet, but just so where this lines up. And again, once you get one of these screws in to line up, that makes it that much easier for all the other ones to line up as well. by hand to get them started and by the way all these screws are the same size so if you mix them up or what have you it really won't matter Again, notice I am holding my hand underneath the back of the chassis just in case something goes wrong. I have to hold it to where the chassis hits the top of the cabinet. Once you've got all these screws threaded like this, you can go ahead and tighten them off. This time I'm going to start with a side. Okay, so now we've got everything back in place, the battery's in, and all the screws are tightened, so the chassis is back in place. Now we're going to plug this back in. We'll come around here and hit the on button. Again, it runs through its boot up process and everything appears to be working all the electronics look good just as I left it so again job is done mm -hmm. Okay, so I changed the battery in this amp two weeks ago and it's still working just as it should. You can hear it playing just some chords here. The amp sounds nice and clear and clean like it's supposed to, so that's great. But you will notice when I go to these preset buttons, I don't get anything out of that. And that's because all that memory disappeared from those presets. So at some point I'll have to go back in and redo those. But again, please be aware that you will lose the memory in your presets, or at least I did. So I'm assuming that will be the case. And uh, any other person or what have you that uh, replaces the battery in the unit. We go back to manual mode and there it is. Again, working just like it should. Okay, so now that I know this works and how simple it was, I'll be changing the battery every two years. and won't put it off like I did in the past. And again, hopefully this video was of help to you. And uh, again, thank you for watching. And I want to thank my daughter. Couldn't have done it without her. She's done the video shooting and the editing, what have you. So uh, again, could not have done it without her. Thanks for watching. And I uh, hope your repair goes successfully.